Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your mercy and grace. And, and Father, we pray for everyone that's here and those that aren't here. Father, we just send a blessing right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ to find them wherever they are. Light a little fire in their backside. Wake them up. Stir them, Father, to go after the things that, that you have for them, Lord. Let them choose those things that are most desirous in your sight and not just our own, Lord. Help us, Lord, to not become weak in the flesh. But let us be strong in the spirit, strong in your might. We know, Lord, that these are the things that we need to not only sustain us, but to equip us and to move us forward. And we send your blessings, Father, for refreshing and a recuperation over everyone's lives, Father, over our own lives, Father, to lift us up to the place in you that you want us to be. We ask, Father, that you strengthen us all today as we are here together, that you speak in our presence, speak in our hearing, Lord, and by your grace, Reach us in the place that we are and bring us to the place that you want us to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it's, uh, it's always uh, a time to seek the Lord. No matter what you are doing, no matter where you are, no matter what's been happening, I think a lot of times we get caught up on where we've been. But I, I want to tell you, your key, your key focus isn't where you've been or where you're going, but where you are. Mm -hmm. How can you plot your course forward if you don't even know where you're at? You know, so I believe that one thing that the Spirit of God is always at work within our being to do is to open the eyes of our understanding, to, to lock us into the place that we are, what condition we are in while we are in that place, and basically what's going on around us. Uh, I think that uh, one of the, when you read David's mighty men, one of the things that was attributed to them, they had those that had slew thousands. There were those who uh, could throw a, a spear. There were those that could run. There were those that could do all these things. But there was a group of them that their skill was to understand the times. And I would, by the grace of God, that we all were in a position that we could understand the times. Yes. Because I think a lot of times we're just completely out of sync. We just don't have a clue. You know, when I was in the world, I didn't know God existed, really. I mean, I, I didn't know. My life was so full, pressing forward. And here God was doing his same old thing. But I was clueless. And then after I came to Christ... I was still clueless. <laughs> it took a while. There's, there's some adjusting that has to take place where we have to realize that there's a lot of daily activity that, that goes on. I think probably the only thing that was more elusive to my thoughts than God back then was the devil. I didn't understand that he was as active as he is, that he was in the role that he was doing that he was able to invade and interfere with my life, I didn't even know it. I, I mean, I, I would blame it on circumstances. I'd blame people. I'd blame all these different things. But I'm going to tell you, there is an evil entity in that invisible realm, and he don't like us at all. That's right. At all. <clears throat> and he has a whole lot that are with him. You think about it. The scriptures talk about an innumerable company of angels. Innumerable. And that means it can't be numbered. If you look at Revelation 12, I believe it is, it talks about just the praising that was going on around the throne was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Now that's a lot. A heck of a lot more than there are human beings on the face of this earth. Amen? So we have entities that are out there that outnumber us incredibly. And then we also read in Hebrews that God, also in Psalms, that God, what is man, that God is mindful of man. For they were created.
created lower than the angels. So we don't, we're not only outnumbered, but we find out that we're actually of a lesser degree. Now that kind of should open our eyes up to realize we have an adversary who doesn't like us. We can't see the rascal. He wants to take us out. Not only does he outnumber us, but he's bigger than we are. And he's stronger than we are. Unless, All right. hallelujah, Come on. unless you're in Christ. Now, if you're in Christ, good news, we have a new ball game. Now, all the other things are still true. He's yes. still out there. Yes. They're still out there. They're still, you're still outnumbered. And physically, they are created in a higher order. But now, you, who were actually in a lower realm than the angels, have now been born again into a greater realm. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Far above every principality and power and rule and authority and the dominion, the name that can be named in heaven and in earth, God has raised your level, your pecking order in creation. Amen? But you still have the adversary. Good news is he's not greater than we are no more and he's not stronger than we are anymore. We have a greater strength and a greater knowledge, a greater understanding only and simply only because we have been born again and are now, our life is hid in Christ Jesus. Yes. yes. Now that's the game changer right there. It's not because you show up here. It's not because you don't show up here. It's not because you're doing all these other different things. It's all in the name that makes the difference. Now, when you think about it, uh, and, and I'm, I want to challenge you, uh, something that is traditionally taught, I believe, absolutely wrong. And the way it's taught, I believe, absolutely wrong, is that they say before God created man and all things that were going on, there was a war in heaven. And that the, the angels fought, they rebelled, and there was this big thing, and uh, big battle, and God's angels fought, Satan angels fought, and everything else, and this is a huge battle. And they believe that it happened. Well, I'm, I want to challenge you that I believe it happened when Jesus Christ walked the face of this earth. Yes, period. Beyond the shadow of a doubt, I believe. When God introduced the game changer into this earth, there was war in heaven. Yes. And the game changer in this earth, God knew when his son came, we would have protection against the devil and his angels. Amen? And, I mean, even in the Revelation, people think the Revelation is chronologically Order. No, it's it's one story told three different times, three different ways from three different dimensions. Here, here. <coughs> now what we find out is in the book of Revelation that the, the devil and his angels, when they fought, they were cast down to the earth. And the devil went around knowing he had a short time. Now people think, well now wait a second, that's got to be at the end of the age. No, let me tell you that when you're talking about an entity that had eternity in mind, a couple of thousand years is a short time. Yes. A very short time. Well, we, from the longevity that mankind has experienced, we have a shorter time here than that to really actively pursue a good battlefront and, and set up the strength and the power that we have. Now, you think about it in Christ. What if, and I'm just saying what if, what if you continue to grow in Christ in knowledge and understanding and spiritual literacy, continuing to move forward in God, and you lived a thousand years? Watch out, man. Now, I'm going to tell you, you're going to put a hurting on the devil and his whole kingdom. Yes. Just one of you would, and just one of us would, and I believe, actually, that that's part of the game plan that God had in motion is not that we would be laying this physical body down after 70 years, but that if we died at 100 years, we'd be thought to be an infant, a little baby. Listen, 
that God intends us to understand we have a worthy adversary. As a matter of fact, we are told that it is our adversary, the devil, who walks around seeking whom he may desire uh, to destroy. Amen? And what we see is that God said, he's not mine in the sense I've already kicked his tail. But he's yours now because you're still living in a body that was created in a lower order. And the enemy has an authority and a power to afflict that part of you. But the part of you born again after God, he cannot touch. Hallelujah. Here. Amen. There, there's a battle daily that goes on that we have to realize God knew that if we would take the authority and the power given to us in his name that our birthright to the things that God birthed us into, our inheritance, the all things that are ours, that when we take possession of that and possession of the kingdom, I believe God knows it's full within our ability to not only live a hundred years, but very possibly a thousand years and beyond. Now, I hope that challenges you. And, and if you don't like it, that's okay too. Go ahead and die if that's what you want to do. Come on. I just soon live... And glorify my Father. Amen. Yes. I believe the design is there. Here's the thing. The faith of God comes to us. It doesn't originate in us. It comes to us. And it comes to us by hearing. But if you won't hear it, then His faith won't come upon you. His faith coming upon you allows you to engage or activate or understand and empower that word that he brought to you. So if faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, then we have to understand that all of our intellectual reasoning is actually null and void and useless when it comes to comprehending and apprehending the things of God that he brings to us. Amen? If you'll remember, in, in the early days of Christianity, they had a hard time just receiving the things Paul was talking about. And I'm not talking about the layperson. We're talking about the disciples. When, when Paul was teaching what he was teaching, the disciples couldn't grasp it. One of the biggest things simply was this, is don't hobnob with, with, the, with the Israelites and the Jews and throw off the Gentiles. And then when you're with the Gentiles, act like you're one of them. He said, you're creating a distinction. Because what Paul saw when Peter and them showed up, uh, when, when the entourage came from Jerusalem, they separated themselves from the Gentiles and act like they were better than them. Now that's a simple thing. That's a very simple thing. Because when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, and... and Jesus was talking with him about basically being born again. Uh, Nicodemus didn't have a clue. He just simply told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And Nicodemus said, what, get back in my mom's womb? Come out again? I don't think mom's going for that. You know? I mean, when you think about it, it, it would be foolish, but he was kind of jesting and being sarcastic back to Jesus in, in a sense. Well, I'm going to tell you, when we start talking about the extreme things of God that he actually has outlined in here and gave us, there's going to be a lot of foolish jesting going on too. When, when we talk about somebody, if they died at 100, they'd be considered a baby. People laugh at you and think, oh, that's in the millennial reign. That's in, and I'm thinking, the what? You know, we reign in Christ now. Yes. Amen. I mean, I, I will challenge anybody to prove a literal thousand years because that's like saying our father heavenly father only owns the cattle of a thousand hills that's not the case it's amazing that they can take a timetable of 490 years that god designated 483 would be from the going forth of the commandment unto messiah they can take that 483 years and then put thousands of year gap in there and stretch it to where it doesn't make any sense <coughs> and you end up with not the 490 years God talked about from Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 through 27 
But you end up with 2,500 years and counting. Yes. And it's like, you know, I thought God might know what he was talking about. <laughs> but evidently, the theologians actually knew a little more than God did. Just ask them, they'll tell you they did. No. No, they'll tell you they got some kind of a little secret formula that formulated that. But I'm going to tell you, it's fantastic stupidity. Here. It's got nothing to do with truth. The whole idea of God was introducing the kingdom of God. Yes, sir. The place where God had authority and power and dominion, and he set that up, and Jesus said, if I, by the finger of God, are casting out demons, then the kingdom, the kingdom of God has come to you, or has come upon you. He's here. Now, Daniel revealed when the kingdom came, it would be set up in the days of these kings. It would be either Nebuchadnezzar's Babylonian Empire, or it would be Cyrus and Daniel's Medo-Persian Empire, or Alexander the Great's Grecian Empire, or it would be the Roman Empire. And when that rock came out of heaven and hit that image that Nebuchadnezzar saw, it hit it on the feet, designating that the time period that it would come would absolutely be in the day of the <coughs> Roman Empire. Yes, hallelujah. And guess what? Good news. Yes, sir. God was right about the period of Babylon. Yay, God. Right? <laughs> God was right about Cyrus, whom he prophesied 200 years earlier, who would come and tell his people, go back and rebuild. God called him by name in Isaiah, and, and Jeremiah later confirmed that it would be 75 years. And, and what we see is God was exactly right. He knew that the two-leaved gates would be open and that the Medo-Persians would come in and Cyrus, his shepherd, would tell his people, go home and rebuild. God's pretty smart. Amen? Now, all of that simply to say that God also knew that Alexander the Great, the four-headed leopard, would have four generals and that Alexander would die at 28 or whatsoever and, and the four generals would take over and they'd give way to this other one. And when he showed that, he was exactly right. When he showed it uh, in Daniel to Daniel, he showed it to Nebuchadnezzar. And then he actually chronologically poured it out upon mankind. And we saw it happen exactly the way God said it would happen. And he said, in that, in that Roman Empire period, here would come the stone kingdom. That the stone would hit the image on the feet, showing the last accountable uh, kingdom that was going to be in existence. And the key was, there wasn't no way, he wasn't trying to stretch it out to the end of the to the end of the universe or end of the earth, he was showing when Messiah would come. Yes, yes. That was the whole theme of the thing, that Messiah was going to come. So he also told Daniel about the 70 weeks of years or septads that would re be revealed. 70 periods of 7 years. And it turned out being 490. All of that, God knows what he's talking about. But, but when you listen to eschatologists today or end time teachers, they still will refute and say, yes, the first seven years, Ezra and Nehemiah, they all came back. They all rebuilt. Took them 49 years, just like God said it would. God's pretty smart. He pulled off the first 49 years. They rebuilt the, the city and they rebuilt the temple. And then it said there would be another 434 years until Messiah the Prince. And that was a total of 483 years. And guess what happened on the year that, that God said it would happen? Jesus goes to the baptismal waters and says an incredible thing. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God yes. is at hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What kingdom? All oh, that stone that my father told you about back through Daniel that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream about. <coughs> That that stone would come. And Jesus is saying, I'm that stone. I'm packing it. I'm the one. I'm the man. Yes, sir. Well, guess what? Here we are 2,000 years later, and they're still looking for the kingdom. Now, I gave you all that chronological stuff and that prophetic stuff so that you'll understand religion as a whole does not understand God, can't hear God, and don't see what God's doing. You do not need to put all of your trust in a religious system, structure, or any kind of a doctrine. 
God put His Holy Ghost in you for an absolute reason. So you would have ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to believe whatever God shows you and tells you. Hallelujah. Amen? So we have to be studious. We have to be moving forward in understanding. Now God told us that, that He cast the angels that had fell down to the earth and it upset the devil because he knows that he has a short time. Well, we need to believe that they're there. Problem is, 90% of Christianity don't really believe they're there. They, they think, nah, leave him alone. If you leave him alone, he'll leave you alone. Oh, yeah, that, that where? Oh, it, it's an idiocy chapter 3. <coughs> There's absolutely everything that God has told us, what Jesus taught us. A lot of people talk about the very first miracle that Jesus did. If somebody said, hey, name the first miracle that Jesus did, what would you say? Turning water into wine. Meh, wrong. What happened was after he called the disciples, when he went straight to the uh, temple, the first thing that happened was there was a guy came to him that was possessed of a demon. Immediately. And what did he do? Get out of here. He cast it out. Why? He confronted, first of all, that demonic activity that was going on. Now, when we understand that Jesus took on these entities, we need to understand a lot more closer that a lot of things going on in your life is not you. But the big thing that's getting us is not necessarily the things we're doing. It's the things we're not doing. We're not resisting. We're not believing like we should. We're not accepting the glory and the honor that our Father has given us. It's a, it's a glory to be clothed with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. It's a great honor yes. that God has yes. given us that in His name we can command that kingdom of darkness. We can take on the entities that are seeking our destruction and we can subdue all the other things trying to hinder us from the purpose of the kingdom of God. Now, when God begins moving in our lives, we need to understand He will not pierce you against the wall and force you to hear and obey the things He's saying you do. If you think He will, you might want to turn a couple of pages of this book. Because what you're going to find out is He says, Whosoever will. In other words, if you want some, don't forget it. That's where it all comes down to. If you, if you want God, He's more than wet ready. He's more than going to welcome you into the things that He has for you. But do not think He's going to bounce you off a wall. Now, you might get bounced off a wall. I've been bounced off a few in my day. As a matter of fact, I think I hit bottom so hard so many times, I got tired of getting up. And I saw a light. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. I remember when Bobby then first came. How did you learn to hear God? I think I got so low, even the devil got tired of talking to me. <laughs> it kind of just got to the point that the only one that would get, come in and bring me a little news was Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. But what we find out is, is once we come into that place, where we enter relationship through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, now there is a responsibility upon us. Come on in. Amen? How weird would you look if you're standing at home wanting a sandwich and you're afraid to go into the house and go into the kitchen? Try pouring that out on somebody. They'll go, oh, okay, wait, right here. 911. You know? They would think you were weird. Well, we've been at our Father's house now. Mm. There's a lot of good things in there. We just got to make our way to the kitchen. If we're hungry, let's go get some. Don't only eat what somebody prepares for you. Get up and fix yourself something. There it is. Get in the realm of the Spirit. Go sit at the Father's table and, and, temp, and give, it, give a menu order. Father, this is on the menu. I want some. I need some peace. I need some joy. I need some love. I need some understanding. I need some mercy, grace. It's all in here, and I'm bringing it now into me, and I'm going to consume it every bit 
and let it integrate into my being so it becomes one with me. How many knows that whatever you eat breaks down in your system and becomes one with you? What have we been eating? And I'm not talking about food. What are we eating? What, what have we been listening to? What have we been focusing on? What have we been bringing into our being that we're giving such attention to that it is so important it outweighs the promises and the blessings that God has for us? There isn't a thing. Nothing. There's nothing worth under, uh, giving up one moment of understanding of the things that God has brought into our being. But we have one. How many of you have ever thought about going to church or, or going to meet somebody to talk about God or do some good things and all hell breaks loose? <laughs> Amen? I'm, I, I'm not the only one. Praise God. All hell breaks loose and the next thing you know, you go, man, I'm 10 minutes late. I'm, there ain't no use in even going. And, and that's the devil standing there with you saying, I wouldn't go now. I, I, you know what? I just put it off till next week. Don't even worry about it. Or you've been here and had a great time, and by the time you get the car started and start down the hill, all hell breaks loose there. Yes, sir. Where do you think the enemy's going to camp at? He's going to camp around the ones that are hearing and seeking because the others he's already got. Yeah. He, he's not worried about them. They're not a threat, but you are. So here are the voices. How many times have you ever said, I'm going to read the Bible? Bless God. I'm just I'm going to read at least a chapter a day and understand it. I'm going to do that. About two weeks later. I am going to read the Bible today. I'm going to, and I'm going to make a list of the things I'm going to do. And then a year later, you know, I remember last year. Now I'm just being real, amen. We're real, right? Who do you think was persuading you otherwise? The desire of your heart was given to you by God. He knows that when we begin to get an understanding of the Scriptures, we, we learn the tone of His voice. We start understanding the modulations of His voice. When there's things that we begin tapping into so that this thing here prepares us little by little to hear better than we've ever heard before. This here doesn't have everything to say to you that you ever need, but the living God who wrote it does. He's got everything we ever need, and it's all right there. And, and you can even be ready to go into prayer, or you can even be praying. And you you might pray for 15 minutes. The next thing you know, your mind is in Honolulu, riding the big waves, or, or your mind's down here at the steakhouse, or your mind's over here on the on the fishing hole, and or your mind's over there thinking about what Aunt Gert and Uncle Tony did. You just don't know your mind. You ever had your mind wrong? And you'll go, God, what's wrong with me? I'm here praying. I'm on my knees and got my face buried. And you're the only thing I want to think about. And I'm thinking about everything but you. Well, I got good news and bad news. The good news is it's probably not you. The bad news is probably one of those bad news angels. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know why? Because they don't, they don't want you to get involved with God. Yes. Oh, they don't mind you coming to church as long as you don't learn nothing. No amens and no hallelujahs, please. Yeah. Now, that's the enemy for you. Whatever you do, don't grab a flag and dance around the room. That's a no-no. He'll try to tackle you. <coughs> or if you're here and God has a message for you, all of a sudden there can be a scream. There, I mean, there, there can be the enemy will use anything he can, and it doesn't mean that the the one being used is evil. It just simply means that the enemy can distract you from getting the message God has for you. Then get ready. Amen. I mean, that's just what he does. That's his mission. But we need to understand who it is and what it is. And if we can, by everything that we're battling, block those things out. Set ourselves and realize, wow, that, that's a crazy thought. You ever had that where you, a crazy thought just come in? That? Where did that come from? And then you realize, if it, if it did that originate in me? No. 
That's why we are told to cast down every thought, every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, God didn't say, I'll do that for you guys. I love you so much. No. He said, uh, you need to learn to do this. As I am, so are you. And that's one of the things I do. That's one of the things you do. Amen? He's training us. He's trying to grow us, mature us up so that we are able to move on from the elementary principles and doctrines of Christ and go into maturity. Yes. The whole creation is groaning and travailing, waiting for the manifestation of the children of God. And we got to mature. we got to grow up. we just got to learn that God has everything in place for us and it's before us, but we have an invisible realm of darkness that does not want you to get a hold of it. One of the reasons is he read the book. How many believe the devil's read this book? I guarantee you there's a place in there he couldn't quote to you. It's memorized probably. And, and the worst part for him is he understands the end of the book. That it reaches a point when the devil is cast into the lake of fire and all of his angels with him, where the beast and the false prophet are, they're all cast, and hell itself is cast into the lake of fire. Yes. So guess what? He knows that if you win, he loses. The truth is, he knows he's a loser already. He's trying to delay the inevitable. Yes. Do you remember when Jesus showed up and, and he confronted Legion and some of the others? Who art thou? Jesus or Christ, thou Son of God? Have you come to torment us before the time? <coughs> How many believe that he knows there's a time coming? Well, great news. Individually, for you, there's a time coming yes. where the enemy loses. Amen? Not, not that just he is a loser, but that he loses because we have established ourselves in Christ by the grace of God. Amen? That when we grow up in Christ, the more we understand, the more we employ the more we integrate and begin to be a part of our life, the more we decrease and the more he increases, the less access the enemy has to us so that we boldly can say, even as our master, the Lord Jesus did, the prince of this world cometh, but he has no part in me. Amen? Can we boldly say that right now? Can we be confident and say, yeah, he's coming, but I'm not concerned because he ain't got nothing in me. Amen? Got nothing on me. Well, by the grace of God, he does it. The, the biggest thing that the enemy has on most of us is our lack of knowledge. It's not what we know, it's what we don't know. <coughs> Just like I said, it's not as much what we're doing as it is what we're not doing. But by the grace of God, I believe that the Spirit of God is moving us not only to an awareness of the Holy Ghost of God, which we've been doing the Holy Spirit work with, but, I, and I mean this, I believe, is the direction. I believe when God says, Hudson, write this book, put it together, and then I want you all to study it together, and then I see what he's saying, I believe he wants us aware of who we are and, and who he has established to be in us and that we have become individually and corporately a fortified city. Hallelujah. So that then we can enter into the works of our Father. I'm not saying that we don't do works. I'm just saying that there's a bigger work than we are. Yes. And, and that work, I believe, is God moving us to the place where once we understand it's no longer I who live, but actually Christ who lives in me, and what that means to me, the revelation of that truth, that I'm no longer the, the one who is in consideration here, but it's actually the Holy Ghost and the mission of God through this vessel, I think when we get a hold of that, we accept the mission, the responsibility, and the purpose that God has 
for the Holy Ghost in the earth today, it will change our lives. Uh, I think that the first things that we're going to want to do is impart life. Yes. It's not going to be seen. Somebody check the weather. Let's see what the weather's going to be. No. It's going to be, Father, I'm ready to impart life today. Thank you for your mercy and grace on my life to make me a life-giving spirit so that now I can impart life. And I know there's individuals I'm going to run into today that needs life imparted to them, so I send the holy angels of God before me right now to guard the way, to protect and keep that way so that I'm not detoured, they're not detoured, that we will have that holy confrontation in God where the light in me will meet the darkness in them and the light will prevail. And, and hopefully the ones who are sitting in that darkness will see that great light yes. and will be transformed and converted out of darkness into light. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and I believe that the mission that God has for us is that. But we have to be fully aware, be consciously aware, that we have an adversary. I mean, when you think about it, when, when Jesus, all the things he could tell us and all the things he could teach us about and stuff like that, when, even in, in uh, Mark 16 and Matthew 28, what he was talking about was that when he was giving us commission, these signs will follow them that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick. They'll cast out devils. You understand what I'm saying? This is part of what he was telling his disciples before he departed from their side. These are things to look for. It's not they're looking good. Got a nice three-piece on. Got that hair trimmed. They got that other hair put up or beautified. They got looking good. No, I ain't got nothing. Oh, they got a nice car, nice house. No, it was all power things. It, it was all kingdom things. It was all intimate things with God that you can't get it any other way. He said, these are the signs that will follow them that believe. And, and I believe we need to get back to our roots. Yes. We need to get back to that place to where Father's proud of us or, or, or is pleased by us. And that we're not just pleasing ourselves or others that would look on us. I, I, I really am at the point in my life where I don't give a rip what people think. Actually, I've been there a while. Ago. You may not have noticed. But I love everybody. I do. But I'm not going to change for them. I, I, want, I want my life to be molded by Christ. Amen? I mess up. Anybody else ever mess up? I mess up. But you know what? I know what to do when I mess up. I know who my master is. I know who my savior is. I know who my sacrifice is. I know who my lover is. I know who all of the things that God has put in me. And you know what? I may fall seven times, but he picks me up every time. Whatever the case is, we need to understand that God has equipped us and has planted us with some incredible things. What we have inherited is what we need to press through. The authority and the power isn't so that we can just stomp around telling everybody the devil's not, I'm not afraid of the devil. The devil needs to know he needs to be afraid of you. Somebody might want to tell the devil he needs to be afraid of you. If you're packing that big, he already knows. And the thing simply is, is if you think he's just going to book it to the other side of the planet, you've got another thing coming. He's going to bring in more manipulation, more coercion, more deception. He's going to do everything he can. So once you start moving forward in that realm of confrontation with the kingdom of darkness, the closer that you need to be to the cross, and, and I don't mean sacrifice, I mean to your death and his resurrection. Yes, because if you're trying to do these things under your own power and your own strength, I already know you've been created lower than the angels. Amen? Amen. Not a good place to be unless you know Jesus. Yes. And more importantly, he knows you. I think a lot of times we we, we understand. I'm not used to single scripture out of here. It looked good, didn't it? Didn't that look good packing the book around? <coughs> the desire and design of God in creation, God was looking for something to come into manifestation something that he knew from the very beginning, before, even before the rebellion in heaven, even before he said, let there be light, he already understood the full scope of things and what was going to transpire over the next millennia. And, and what he understood was, is that I need a solution for that, and I found my solution for that, and that solution is you. 
You're the solution. Christ was the means. The Lord Jesus Christ brought in and took away. He took away everything that empowered the enemy against us and he brought in everything that empowers you against the enemy. That's pretty good. Jesus did it three and a half years. How long have you been at this? How long have we been at this? His love and His mercy and His grace needs to be in our tool pouch. Amen? Joy, strength, confidence, boldness, all of that needs to be in our tool pouch. All the things that God brings on us and the things that He releases in us is there for an essential reason. He wants you to win. He wants darkness to lose, to be pressed back out of the way, and that we have, you and I, individually and collectively, we possess the authority and the power of Christ in our life to move darkness back. You don't go out there screaming and cursing the enemy, bringing a railing accusation like brute beast against these things that you can't see and don't have a clue about. Just simply say, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes I say, the Lord rebuke you. Amen? Amen. <coughs> you're not going to impress the enemy. As a matter of fact, you're going to excite him. If you come mad, you come angry, you come in any other way than in Christ, he's going to eat your lunch. But if you don't come up against him, he's going to eat your lunch anyway. Amen? At least let's be defiant. And then grab him by the throat or something. I mean, you know, whatever. Get back. But wherever you are in Christ, there's a better place in Christ. Whatever you think your revelation knowledge and level of understanding is or level of joy or peace, there's a deeper one. We're, we're continually growing into those things. And I believe that the deeper we go into those things, the more it saturates our entire being. And I believe it can begin to alter and change and transform our being, even like Abraham and Sarah. Amen? Amen. So when, when we start seeing the purpose and the plan of God, there is darkness, but there sure is light. Amen? Right now, most of Christianity, the ministers that I talk to, all they can talk about is, is that the Antichrist is out there now, it might be Donald Trump. It might be the, the North Korean dictator. It can be anything. And, and they've already chosen a million names over the years. And they've got proof it's who, that's who it is. Well, I'm going to tell you, anti doesn't always, and most often, doesn't mean against. It means to come alongside, to imitate. And, and all of these that think that they can name an individual who's the Antichrist, I guarantee you the Antichrist is the one that came alongside them and told them that that's who it was. So we need to narrow down who we're listening to and realize that even the disciples knew that in their day, many antichrists had already went out into the world. You won't hear or find in this book anywhere the singular form word antichrist. It's not there. It's kind of like looking for the rapture. It's not there. It's like looking for all these different things that they're so afraid of and so focused on and their whole life and, and all of the direction is, is formed in these doctrines, and they're not even there. <coughs> the obvious that is there, like we talked earlier about Dan, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's vision of that great uh, image and the success of king, kingdoms from Babylon through the Persian, Greek, and, and Rome, that God was pointing that point and said, my kingdom up right there. So instead of accepting that the only one who could do that, being Jesus Christ, came and believe it or not, he was successful. I know. If you, it looks kind of bad because he went out on the cross. But you know, he did come out of that tomb. Yes, sir. Demonstrating what the Father said would happen. He knew he was going to come out. He knew he was going to go in there. But he knew he was coming out too. He, he knew that. Well, if the Father says that's, the, that's when the, the stone kingdom, the kingdom of God was going to be set up, and Jesus shows up and says, hey, 
kingdom's here. You would think we could just say, hey, kingdom's here. Amen. Praise God. Instead of saying, hmm. You know, it doesn't say it, but I think we can squeeze it a couple of thousand year gap in here. All we got to do is move this 69th week of years, the 483 years to the crucifixion of Christ. Then we'll take that last seven years and put it out here at the end of the age. We can pull that off. And we'll say Jesus, because he was rejected by the Jews, withdrew the offer of the kingdom of God. And he's not going to present it until he comes back. Now, all of that that I just shared with you, they teach as being true. But it's fiction. It's fiction. Faction. The true facts are Jesus Christ came and set up the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God would not come with observation. He told them that. If they say come here and look or come there, don't believe them. Because it's inside of you. The authority, what is kingdom? The basilia. It's, it's the authority and the power of God released in the earth. And Jesus told, and told him in Luke 10, 19, I give you authority over all the authority and power of the enemy so that nothing by any means can harm you. Uh, but you put all that together, they go, nah, let's put it out here at the end of the age. Well, good news, we're bringing it back. Yes. I'll look it. Yes, sir. We've been bringing it back. For a long time now. We, we know and understand. But I, I want you to be gifted with the same gift and the same knowledge that God wants us all to have. And that is, Jesus Christ is alive and well in planet earth and in the kingdom of God yes. and in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Amen. Yes. He's here inside of you right now carrying out his mission of subduing and pulling down all strongholds all principalities, all powers, all spiritual wickedness, all rulers of the darkness of this world, subduing every kingdom under the kingdom of God to the day that we give presentation to our Father and present Him with the kingdom. Yes. Amen? Amen. So, if, if we can bypass all the foolish things and do what Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow. You know, that kind of narrows it down, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think is going to happen next year? I don't care. I'll deal with that next year. Amen. I can't deal with it now. I'll just deal with it then. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to handle today. I don't know about you. Got my hands full. Matter of fact, some of the stuff I, I, my hands are full with are things you should be doing. So, get in here and help me. Amen. Amen. Say that, say that with me. Say, I'll take no thought take for tomorrow. By the grace of God. Because my Lord today and my solution today, Christ in me today, will be in me tomorrow. And the solution will be there tomorrow for tomorrow. So my solution for tomorrow and the rest of my life is Christ in me today, now. The present reign of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's, and, and if we can adapt that mentality right there, really engage it, I think you'll find out a lot of pressure will come on. A lot of it will just be lifted off. And, and we might actually, I know it's going to sound extreme, but we might actually become joyful. Yeah. I know, I know. Whoa, well, listen to him. We're going to be joyful? Yeah. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Sounds like a good place to be to me. Yes. Sounds like the place I want my kids to be. Yes, sir. And I believe it's the place our Father wants His kids to be. Yes, sir. So welcome to the joy. Amen. 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 Glory to God. We have we have an incredible Father, and you are incredible. And I want you to discover who you are in Him and who He is in you. And I believe not only will our lives change. And the lives around us change. But I believe that this world is in for an overhaul. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. I thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share and speak with my brothers and sisters today. Thank you for giving me what to talk about, as you always do. Father, I pray in Jesus' name and agree with my brothers and sisters 
And we call on the host of heaven, the living word of God, and we bind every principality and power, all spiritual wickedness of high places, every ruler of the darkness of this world, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We remove and them from their place and positions of power and authority or their mission against us. We cast it down in the name of Jesus and empower now by the living word of God, the holy angels of God and the host of heaven to move in to eliminate, eradicate, and remove the strongholds of the enemy and remove the enemy, taking him captive, binding him hand and foot, uh, and putting him under chains and reserving him in the pits of hell till hell itself is cast into the lake of fire. In Jesus' name, we release now for that to be carried out. In everybody's life, in every circumstance, everyone in agreement with me right now, Father, I speak for that to be carried out and accomplished. And a breath of fresh air and a release and, and a, a stressless day and time and season to be a bono, Father. To be refreshed and renewed in your mercy and your grace. In your joy and your compassion. Stirred with a fresh fire for you. And Father, I pray that in all things, they are filled to overflowing with all of your blessings, all of your goodness, all of your joy, your mercy, your grace, your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That they can be filled up with you. To overflow it. And Father, that the eyes of our understanding be opened. That we begin to comprehend the height, the length, the breadth, the depth of your love. And, and to begin to move in and understand that we are that that we are. Father, that you have made us to be the ones you wanted us to be. And that by your grace we will stop wrestling with you. And that we will accept the glory and the honor that you have given us. We will boldly stand up in the name. And not only proclaim. But subdue the enemies. Take the lands in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And make all of your enemies a footstool for your feet. And collectively and united in and with the name and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ move forward to that place of perfection where we deliver the kingdom up to you and all darkness flees away forever and that all the evil and the wickedness and the corruption are completely burned and removed as though purged by fire and thank you Father for making us flames of fire in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Great is the Lord. Amen. And greatly to be praised. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Does anybody have anything uh, they need prayed over or anything they want to add? Or... Tony. Yeah, Bill. Um, there was something on the internet where it said that, uh, you know, that talk about North Korea. Yeah. Well, it said that the United that this country would not be ready for war with them. Well, you know, to me, ready or not, the United this country will defend herself and will defend her allies. I mean, whatever it takes, this country will defend itself under God. Oh, absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I believe the assessment of our military uh, strategists and the administration and everything else says we are well suited for any battle. And, and I believe that that restoration has taken place uh, because God's mercy and God's grace. Yes. And, and I'm praying and believing that there will be a resolution to North Korea without one bomb yes. being dropped. It's yes. not that we need any more dro bombs dropped. Right. I mean, if you would think that Hiroshima and Nagasaki would have been uh, enough for the world to say we don't want no more of this yet we still have those who pop up and do it so I, I don't think it's a matter of the size of bombs mm -hmm. or the number of bombs I think it's going to take the strength and the strategy of the body of Christ and the authority and the power of God to subdue pull down these evil and wicked things without one shot being fired you can't shoot the devil 
it's an impossibility, and, and you, you can't uh, hook him up and get him in a headlock and put a newbie on him. You can't do none of that stuff. But one thing we can sure do is cast him down, pull him down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And and I believe if anybody's doing what that little fellow is doing over in North Korea, it's the devil. And, and I think that he has some cohorts going on in Iran. And I'm praying that even Russia sees the light. Yes. And China as well. Those are some nations that have been really uh, colluding together uh, for some reason. Uh, it's kind of like the axis of evil that George Bush talked about. And, uh, and he was a praying man, and I believe that God speaks to the leaders of nations. And I believe that he had a revelation where he understood where the sitting powers were of evil that was trying to impact and affect basically uh, mankind as a whole. And um, that should be also a clue to us where we know where to pray, where to pull down, where to do things at. So by the grace of God, I'm with you, Tony. The United States as a nation, I, I believe that they're ready for anything. Uh, I, I don't think that the people of the United States are ready for anything, but I believe militarily we can handle ourselves against any foe. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. Does anybody else have anything before we... All right. Father, we, we bless the, the, the tithe, the offering, the gift to give her, Father. Those who have brought Father in Jesus' name, we pray blessings upon it, blessings upon their lives, their finances, Lord, that they have always more than enough. Father, that just like the cruise of oil, let it never run out. Let it be an ample supply, not only for them, but for those that come to them. <coughs> Help us all, Father, to be wise stewards of the things that you bring to us. The Lord, we rebuke the devourer that would be trying to afflict, affect, or to uh, drain the finances or the other assets of individuals under the sound of my voice. We rebuke that adversary and we set guards and watch around their things as we are in agreement with them that they will have more than enough, have an ample supply for themselves, their family, and those that come to them seeking uh, assistance. Father, we just bless you and thank you for it all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I know that air is kicking. It is hot in here. Amen. Anybody else have anything? Right. Well, I bless you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord keep you and His face to shine upon you and smile upon you. And let the things that He has spoken to us today sink into our hearing. And let us be established in the truth that is present with us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You are free to go. Jesus Christ.